Hey everyone, uh, my name is Nick and today we are taking a look at the new update for Microsoft Teams. If you find this uh, video useful, you know what to do. Um, and with all that done and uh, out of the way, let's jump on into the update. Okay, so the very first update that we have um, for Microsoft Teams in July 2020 is the Together Mode. So Microsoft Together Mode basically is um, an AI segmentation technology to digitally place multiple video feeds into a shared background. Um, it's designed to be in the same meeting all at the same time, um, so really helped with that kind of uh, remote working atmosphere that we're currently experiencing. Um, it also has some AI in there as well to help people um, look towards the presenter or to look who is, who is actively speaking at the time. Um, and the way that it, do, it does this is it kind of just rotates um, the camera feed so you're kind of always looking forward. Um, so that's quite a nice thing to have. Um, and this scales up all the way to that 7x7 seven seven, um, video feed, so 49 video feeds in total. Now, by um, or, or when this actually gets released, because we have no concrete release date for this particular feature yet, um, there will be a couple of different, uh, I guess, backgrounds that you will be sharing together. Um, so anything from like the um, classroom atmosphere all the way through to a coffee shop um, experience. Um, but you know, at the moment, we don't have any concrete dates as to when this is going to be released or what kind of shared backgrounds are going to be available to everyone to use. Um, so, you know, that it, ultimately the together mode is not um, a huge like, functionality change within Microsoft Teams, but it does kind of help uh, foster a more collaborative workspace. Um, so, you know, you feel that you are all in the same meeting together um, visually in a virtual meeting um, with a shared background. So, you know, that's the first update that we have. Um, and it looks pretty cool, but as I said, it doesn't really have any major um, change to uh, the functionality of Microsoft Teams. It's just a, a kind of a nice to have um, experience. Okay, so the second update that we have is for Microsoft Teams large gallery view. And, and as I said before, as I briefly spoke about with the 7x7 seven seven feeds um, that are part of the together mode. The, the large gallery basically now allows up to 49 camera feeds in uh, a single meeting. So basically you get a 7x7 seven seven grid um, of 49 feeds in total. Now this is an example of what 16 would look like, um, you know, with basically 16 feeds in, in one uh, meeting. And this is what 25 feeds would look like um, and then this is your 49 feeds. Now the 49 feeds obviously has a lot uh, going on in it, it's very much like Zoom, obviously Zoom expands much further than 49 but um, fundamentally you know the basics are the same, you have multiple camera feeds all going into the same meeting um, which is something that you know Microsoft Teams has been lacking for quite some time. So it's good to see that they're finally kind of catching up um, with some of the competition. So the next um, update that we have is uh, the, sorry, before I actually go on to that next update, um, the 7x7 seven seven grid is available now, so you should be able to use that um, straight away. Now, if you can't see that, then you probably just need to update your Microsoft Teams, um, and there's a link to the, in the description of a video that I show you guys how to update um, Microsoft Teams, and I'll also link it into the um, end of the video as well. Um, so the next thing that we're going to talk about is the uh, dynamic stage. So the dynamic uh, layout and sizing of different video feeds um, basically allows to, the use of the maximum screen possible. Um, so you, you can optimize the layouts for the amount of camera feeds that you have in there um, versus if you're presenting you still want to be able to see um, other members uh, in the meeting as well. Then um, this dynamic stage um, basically allows for that kind of customization of the layout of the meeting. Um, so these are a couple of examples here. So, so that as you see, just flicking through, you have the presentation mode, and you have obviously various different other feeds going on uh, or different layouts going on. Now, when someone raises their hand, this also gets highlighted. So um, for example, this here is uh, basically you get this yellow box that basically comes around um, the camera feed of that particular person um, and basically it 
it shows the, the uh, organizer um, that that particular person has raised their hand, would like to ask a question, uh, etc. Um, so that's quite a nice little feature to have there as well. Um, and then um, also chat bubbles, um, they all appear over a video feed if you haven't opened the chat pane. So you can see the chats that are also happening and they get kind of embedded into the um, video feeds, uh, but only if you haven't got uh, the chat feed open, I believe. Um, and again, I have no concrete dates as to when this feature is going to be released, um, but hopefully, you know, it's going to be soon. Um, it was minimal updates in June, um, so we are due a, a bigger update, hopefully uh, by the end of the month of July. Um, but, you know, as with Microsoft, you know, they announce things and then never get around to it. Uh, at least not for a few months afterwards. Um, right, so the next uh, part of the video here is, um, or the next update is the video improvement filters. And this is something that uh, Zoom has had for a while and it's nice to see that um, Microsoft is kind of catching up a little bit. So from here, basically there's filters that will improve the video quality. Um, so basically if you've got poor lighting, it can update and refresh that kind of stuff um, and basically kind of blur out your background, enhance you um, visually uh, by adjusting lighting levels and softening focus and uh, etc. So it basically enhances your video feed going into the meeting, which is, is brilliant. You know, it's something that Zoom's had for a while, so it's nice to see that Microsoft Teams are also going to be implementing that shortly too. And again, I have no concrete dates on this one, but I like to believe this is uh, something that will be coming in July or August. Okay, the next update that they have is for live captions. Um, so basically, as you're speaking in a video meeting, um, basically now you have the ability uh, to have live captions uh, and it's only available in English currently. Uh, I imagine more languages will follow. Um, but basically, as you speak, um, all of your um, words are captured and then also basically captured live and then displayed to the meeting if that option is selected. Uh, and basically what that allows you to basically do is if for some reason you need to turn your audio off, um, then you can read what is actually happening in that meeting. Now, I imagine that this isn't going to be 100% perfect. They never are. Uh, if you look at things like YouTube or Facebook, um, their AI for transcription is it's good. It, but it's not perfect, you know, and it comes down to obviously accents, uh, etc. So, you know, it's going to be helpful for many, but at the same time, it's not going to be 100% perfect. Um, so you'll have to watch that one a little bit. And again, I don't know when this will be released, but um, it will be um, hopefully July, August. Um, and along the same kind of theme uh, with that transcript in meetings, um, you can see that in like a, a chat bubble kind of feed. Uh, work transcript and it'll come through and it will basically um, also be available after the meeting has ended as well so you can see what that transcript looks like. Um, so it's like another way of meeting notes except this time it's a little bit more automatic you don't have typically having someone there typing up notes um, in the same way that you might record a, a meeting um, in video form this transcript kind of does the, the written form of that meeting as well. Okay, so the other thing that um, hopefully will be coming out in July, August will be reactions. Um, so live reactions in meetings. So these are quite cool little features where basically, you know, you can clap, you can give um, heart emojis, laughing faces emojis, etc. in that meeting and each one will appear within your camera feed. Now, this, uh, I'm, on the, I'm on the fence with it a bit because you know, Microsoft Teams fundamentally is, in my opinion, more of a professional tool, right? The way that it kind of links into, um, you know, SharePoint and uh, various other kind of um, business related applications that will, this feature kind of dilutes that a little bit. Um, you know, say, you know, obviously it has education purposes as well, and it could be quite fun to have your students do these things uh, in your meetings. Um, but personally, for me, I don't think this is something that I'll be using. Uh, it looks cool. It's a nice little fun feature, but um, yeah, 
and maybe I'm just maybe that's just my personal opinion. I'm not a big fan, but you know, um, that's that. Um, and that brings us on to the next thing. So with um, Microsoft Teams, it had been restricted to 250 users. Um, however, um, or, or meetings that is, right? Uh, 250 members in a meeting. Um, that has been increased now to 300, and that's available right now. Um, so that's been released. Um, but Microsoft T are basically saying that they would like to actually get this up to 1,000 users um, in the future. So they're going to steadily increase the amount of members uh, or users in a meeting um, all the way up to 1,000. Now that to me just seems really excessive um, to have a thousand people in a single meeting. Um, but I guess there are some organizations where uh, that would be absolutely required. Um, but you know, for now we've got 300, that's pretty useful. Um, I can't think of any business that I've currently worked in where I would want a meeting um, to be broadcast to 300 people. Um, unless you're kind of doing more like um, organization-wide announcements, um, but then I would probably look to the more live events. But anyway, um, so yeah, so they're going to be increasing to 1,000 in the future. We have 300 now. Next update comes to the whiteboard. So the whiteboard is something that um, if you used Zoom before, you know it's a very useful tool. It's also very useful in Teams. I personally find it a little bit difficult to use, um, but that is mainly because I'm not a tablet user. So the update to the whiteboard in July um, basically allows us to add things like sticky notes onto that whiteboard um, as a PC user. Um, so you don't necessarily have to have a tablet and you know take uh, and draw on that whiteboard with uh, the Apple Pencil, for example. Um, the whiteboard update basically now it loads faster, it includes sticky notes, you can add text to it, you can drag and drop um, things in the whiteboard. Um, and basically this is basically just enhances the whiteboard experience for people who do not have access to a touchscreen device. Um, so I'm, I'm going to um, be hopefully impressed by the update when it actually is released. Um, again, I have no concrete date on when that is, but um, when it is released, I'll, I'll experience what it is like as a PC user to see if these updates actually make it more usable um, for someone like myself in the um, PC world rather than the tablet world. Um, so yeah, we'll see what that one comes, uh, what that one's like when it is released. There is one last update that um, I think is pretty cool. Um, and that potentially may help many of you guys out as well, which is um, Reflect, um, which is a, a basically like a polling application that's now available or will be available um, in Microsoft Teams. And basically this will let you create polls um, for your channels and you can just put these out to your teams. Um, and, you know, in this example here, we have, you know, you can mark how you're feeling scenario. Um, and then basically, you know, you can gather all that information and see how your team is feeling within, um, you know, their current work experience, uh, you know, environment. Um, you know, working remotely as we are currently and with businesses opening up slowly and even where I am now, we, we, um, we, we can go into the office, um, but the preferred option really is still to kind of do uh, work from home as much as you can. Um, and so therefore Microsoft Teams is, you know, vital in the way that we work. So to have something like this where you can poll out to all of your employees who are working remotely to find out how they are doing is a very nice feature to have. It's um, a pretty comprehensive update to the uh, Microsoft Teams application. Um, and some of it's going to be really useful and some of it's going to be um, or I'm a bit more of a skeptic about because I don't necessarily think um, some of those features are, are for me personally, but you might absolutely love them and want to um, go ahead and, and get those, um, or get Microsoft Teams updated as soon as possible to uh, start using those features. Um, so as I said before, um, if you, I, as, because I don't know concrete dates on when 
uh, a lot of this is going to actually be um, available to you guys. Um, I will link a video here just um, saying, or, or you know, uh, basically telling you guys how you can update Microsoft Teams if you're not already familiar um, and to check to make sure that you have the latest version um, all the time. Um, if you found it useful, you know what to do and I'll catch you guys in the next video.